Welcome back. We'll just reconvene now. We have a special treat. I'd like everybody to join me in welcoming a special guest that we have. But before we do that, I want to provide a bit of a background on the gentleman that's joining us today. So we have the, prep, uh, the privilege here of hearing from Dwayne Morgan. Dwayne Morgan is a two-time Canadian National Poetry Slam champion. He began his career as a spoken word artist in 1993. And the following year, in 94, he founded the Up From The Roots Entertainment Company to promote the positive artistic contribution of African Canadians and urban influence artists. I can personally attest to attending many of these events over the years, many of my colleagues, and it's been influential in a, a generative space for the culture and a space that we're all proud of. But let me go back to the bio. So um, Morgan made the 2022 Shifter Magazine list of outstanding black men in Canada, while also winning the Toronto Arts Foundation's Celebration of Cultural Life Award and in 2018, the Sherry D. Wilson Golden Beret Award for Career Achievement in the Spoken Word. Morgan has received both the African Canadian Achievement Award and the Harry Jerome Award for Excellence in Arts. So please join me in giving a warm welcome to Dwayne Morgan. Hopefully what I have chosen to do will add some value to some of the stuff that is happening today, some of the discussion that is happening. I have worked in community and with young people for uh, the last 30 years. And the work that I'm going to share with you today has been informed by, inspired by um, the communities and the young people that I work with and the things that, that I see engage with and interact with. So there's a line out the door of 13 year old black boys dressed in their Sunday's best, accompanied by parents looking stressed but understanding this rite of passage, it's picture day. So we dress up our teens and make them say cheese, continue this routine every two years, images archived online in case our sons die gone too soon. This way, the media can be given the official images that we want used, not the ones they always seem to find that have us looking like we've lived a life of crime and are unworthy of compassion empathy, inquiries, investigations, and no one wants to be here. This is nobody's idea of a fun afternoon, a good use of family time, taking pictures in case our sons die, but everyone knows that a picture says a thousand words, and this might be the only obituary spoken heard because we are living in a world where more black boys will die in Chicago than soldiers during the Iraq war, where black boys will continue to die from being poor, with poor options and poor choices, leaving us pouring out liquor, spilling spirits for lost spirits, because black lives only seem to matter when they're dead. So every month we put aside funds for our son's education slash funeral fund. We live in the now. Tomorrow seems like a cruel joke when you grow up in communities that make you play hunger games for survival, creating rivals out of street codes, often outlined in chalk in our street clothes. We think we're dying prematurely. They think we're dying right on time. So every two years, we reluctantly join this line, ensuring that the first suit he wears is not the one that he's buried in, that he sees how handsome he is that he gains the desire to live, so that he can see that these pics can be used for nothing more than special occasions and milestones that we celebrate. So let me fix your tie. Stand up straight. Smile, son. It's picture day. Thank you. <laughs> to be a gift, Born into this world, male, packaged in black skin, is to be constantly reminded that your life is disposable, that it lacks meaning and value and isn't protected by the law. You live with the knowledge that justice is a drunk that will not be served. We, the black gifts, are the first to be accused and the last to be believed. We are the guilty until proven innocent, the aggressor despite the evidence. We are the hoops which loopholes are made. We are the sambos, the puppets. Our value determined by the worth we bring our puppeteers. So dance, Negro, dance. Rap, black boy, rap. Run, boy, run. But what about those of us who are regular, who are average? 
who don't have gifts or talents that the world wants or needs, who are just their bodies, packaged in black skin, stuck on modern day plantations, being abused at will, and people wonder why we seldom smile and it seems like our looks could kill. We are the ones who put basketballs in our son's palms before they can walk and only dribble with the hope that they will grow to dribble beyond their packaging. We are the ones that make elevators go quiet, purses and loved ones clench tighter. We are the deer that stare down the barrel of guns, but there is no license needed to hunt us. We are the suspicious packages at the airport or in any store with goods that we aren't supposed to be able to afford, whether in a hoodie or a suit, accused of driving while black in minivans or coupes. We are the black licorice discarded at Halloween, the silhouette used for target practice by the police, the black men who spend their days wanting nothing but to be human with respect and dignity. So this is for every Trayvon, Jaquan, Marcus, Jordan, Dwayne, every black man considered a nobody despite having a name for everyone who has ever felt the pain of race for the empty seat beside a black man on the train for we are the ones who meet death on cold asphalt discarded like roadkill we are the ones worthless bodies packaged in black skin that nobody seems to want we are the voiceless we are the ones so one of the um maybe worst things about my career is that I actually have to write these poems. Um, I actually wish I could write about other things, but these things are still relevant and pressing and are happening with the young people that I deal with and work with. So it's, it's a gift and a curse that I actually have to write, you know, these things. It was 4 a.m. when she woke me. And I can still remember the cold sweat on the back of my neck like it was yesterday. 16 years have now passed. And I can still remember the pregnancy test in my hand and how it felt like my heart and my world had stopped simultaneously and nobody knows this. But at every doctor's visit, as he would perform routine ultrasounds, I would look from the ground to the screen, hoping, praying to God that none of the squiggly lines that I was seeing would confirm this little being as a boy. And I don't feel good about it. But I've lived a long time in skin despised simply for its hue, so every November I go populous. Not out of disrespect, I'm just not a fan of Remembrance Day, remembering that there has never been a plane sent to save us. We are the displaced. Our bodies and religion stolen. We were given a new prophet as they used us to make profits. Ask Nike what a black man is worth. For hundreds of years we've been killed as a form of amusement. Gunned down with no fear of repercussions, so don't blame me for not wanting to be burdened by the birth of a black boy, born into a world built on his back, forcing me to teach him how to write and his rights, knowing that even my greatest efforts can't keep him alive when his skin is a threat. So yes, I stood there, staring blankly at a screen, hoping, praying to God that none of the squiggly lines that I was seeing would confirm this little being as a boy, maybe. Having a girl would increase my chances of not having a child who'd grow up to be a hashtag trending because the killing of black men has been a trend since forever. So we write Black Lives Matter, not to try to inform others, but to try to convince ourselves in a world that is constantly showing us otherwise in my heart. Can't help but break for those parents who have had their children snatched from their lives. It was an April afternoon when I found myself pacing around the delivery room, wondering if my prayers would be answered at 3.20. The most precious little girl was presented to me and I cried uncontrollably for hours knowing that I had just been blessed. Not because having a girl would make her worth more, but because we live in a world where black boys will always be worth So imagine that in what is supposed to be the happiest times of people's lives, bringing a child into the world in the black community, for many people, that is a time of extreme anxiety. That is a time where people fear, what if it's a boy? What if it's, what's going to happen? How is he going to be treated? How is he going to navigate through life? And part of how we are socialized is how to survive, not just to live and thrive, how to survive in the skin that you are in. And that becomes a part of how we socialize our children, right? It's not just about going to school and doing all this stuff and, and living the great life. How do you just survive being in the skin that you are in that is going to bring all of these other things your way? 
So there were some studies done back in the 70s looking at how early people develop ideas around race. So I took some of that for this next poem and then also took some of my own experiences with my daughter. Michelle, age four, white. Michelle, which doll is the pretty one? The white one. Raquel, age four, white. Raquel, which doll is the mean one? The black one. Natasha, age four, black. Natasha, which doll is the nice one? The white one. Keisha, age four, black. Keisha, which doll is the ugly one? The black one. Keisha, which doll looks like you? The black one. By the age of four, the seed of racism, self-hatred, and inferiority is already subconsciously planted in the brain, like sugarcane, like cotton, like cash crops that will benefit those who grow it more than those who sow it and don't I know it. As the father of a daughter who struggles to see herself on store shelves, these are little black girl blues. You can find darker hued versions of white dolls that look nothing like you. Straight hair, straight nose, forcing parents to have to straighten things out, removing the kinks of self-doubt, becoming vigilant, parenting becoming militant, but only if they get it. Only if they understand the damage being done and the need to protect her identity by any means necessary. Birthday invitations included the postscript, please no white dolls, which created their fair share of conversations, protection seen as reverse hatred. The few dolls of a lighter hue that managed to sneak past our border wall soon found themselves missing like native women in Canada. It is funny. This little thing called race. How it plays out from day to day and has us worshiping things that look nothing like us. Whether dolls on store shelves or their version of Jesus and these little things are always so much bigger. Which is why she forgets cartoons but remembers every detail from hidden figures and some will still see this as nothing. But I saw her desire to become a doctor after watching Doc McStuffins because representation matters. It matters to see yourself reflected in the society in which you live, not as a cliche or stereotype but just as normal and positive and maybe. This is too much to ask. When the fabric of our economic quilt happens to be anti-black, periodically I will ask if you could, is there anything about yourself that you would change? At 16 years of age, her answer has remained the same. No, I'm pretty awesome. Yes, you are, I always reply. Fist of pride held high, beaming on the inside, emanating out proud that there's one less black girl who refuses to play and be shaped by society's dollhouse. So while we have these great conversations about diversity and equity and all of these wonderful sounding things, go to Walmart and Toys R Us. Go into the doll aisle and you would be amazed because even in 2023, it is extremely difficult to find a doll that looks like my daughter. Same shape nose, same texture hair. So we have to ask ourselves, when a child who's even four years old, who doesn't have the language to articulate what is happening, goes into this aisle and they look at all the dolls and there is no doll that looks like them, what is being taught in that moment? You don't matter. You're not the choice. Nobody wants you. And then you look and see what dolls are there. And you say, oh, that's who's important. That's who's valuable. That's who's the choice. And then you want to have one of those dogs. Now, we have very unique hair as black folks. Now, we have something, you know, on maybe Sunday when our mom, grandma's combing our hair. It's, it's an experience. It's not the same experience with the dolls at Walmart. So you might sit there having one experience wishing you could have the experience your doll is having. In that moment, you are learning how to hate yourself in order to be accepted, in order to be the choice. And that lives with you from the time you are four to the time that you go. That is a part of who you are. You don't belong. You're not good enough as you are. And you always enter into rooms questioning yourself because of that seed that was planted before you even had the words to articulate it. But my daughter told me that she was being teased by one of the boys in her class. I couldn't help but laugh knowing that he had picked the wrong one. A girl with a razor sharp tongue who would sharpen her edges on a fragile ego just for fun, if provoked. 
I let her know the next time he loses his mind, simply tell him you're only doing that because you like me, but say it when he's with his friends. Watch him shrivel up like the wicked witch of the West because the worst thing for a boy is to be caught having emotions that aren't anger or aggression, to be forced to be held accountable for his actions and intentions, and who's teaching the boys that no means no? Not maybe, not maybe she didn't mean it, not maybe I should try again later until such time that boys no longer feel a sense of entitlement simply because of how they were born. I will continue to be a thorn in their sides, a parenting vigilante, okay with me too as a movement, but not wanting it to be a part of another generation's reality. So I've given her permission to snap at any boy who thinks that snapping bra straps is cute, to clap back at anyone who gets confused, thinking that they can touch without permission or invitation. And who's teaching the boys that they're unsolicited opinions are okay until such time that things change I will continue to teach her to be careful know where the exits are yell fire instead of rape watch your drinks traveling groups until such time that boys will be boys ceases to be used as an excuse freeing them from taking responsibility I will question who do these boys become when they are taught that it is taboo to love to like to feel Every three days across this land, a woman or a girl is killed 90% of the times at the hands of men. Who's raising the boys who grow up to be them? Who's teaching the boys that rejection is just another part of life? Until such time that missing a shot with a girl is treated with the same nonchalance as missing a shot in a game, I will continue to teach her that pain doesn't mean I like you and to be wary of predators cloaked in affection because there are some who will seek to build themselves up using the broken pieces of your self-esteem, pieces broken by their very own hands, who's teaching the boys not to use their words, to have expectations for the bodies of others that they would never accept for their own, to act as though they are owed simply because they were born male with no other virtues. Have you ever questioned who's teaching the boys? Yeah, I get it. Me too. So I have one final uh, poem to share with you. And um, when my daughter was much younger, she would always bring me these stories to read. And in these stories, there was always some girl, woman, princess. She was going through life, life was awesome. And then she got to a fork in the road and needed some boy, man, prince to save the day. And I was like, why am I participating in this? This is horrible. I have no desire for you to grow up thinking that this is how life is supposed to work. So life, usually offers us at least three options. We have the option to see things happening around us and ignore them. We have the option to see things happening around us and complain about them. We have the option to see things happening around us and do something about them. So I decided I was gonna write my own children's book to reshape these um, narratives. And it's called Fairy Tales. And this is how I am going to end my portion of our day. I look forward to bedtime. I let her choose whatever story she wants to read to see what adventures we find. Time after time, I've come to realize that there are dangers lurking on bookshelves, words and sentences used to affirm the imaginations of boys while leaving girls to wonder if they're good enough to find their prince and to think. We socialize girls to find their prince charming while never teaching boys how to be charming. I find this alarming. So allow me to tell you some things that these books refuse to in this life. You had better learn how to take care of yourself. There is no man coming to save you, but one who will always have your back. As a matter of fact, the man that you choose to love might end up being the one that you need to be protected from. As a matter of fact, your knight in shining armor might come riding in in a plaid shirt, stilettos, or both. Who knows? Keep your options open. As a matter of fact, you might even end up alone, and that is also okay, because there's no reason to believe that you don't already have everything that you need, and that some a man is going to come and magically make you complete when you are far from a damsel in distress. Look at this world that we live in. If there's anyone that needs saving, it's probably men. So don't just spend your days only fantasizing about a wedding when there's so much adventure to be had. You can be an astronaut and fly to the moon. You can be an animator who invents cartoons. You can be a chemist or a mechanical engineer. You can be a makeup artist, help people style their hair. You can be anything that you want under the sun. But always remember that if a frog comes up to you and asks for a kiss, the first thing that you should do is run because playing princesses is cool, but there's no reason to believe that your self-worth should be tied to the views of one who sees you as more destined for the sidelines and being in the game. I don't work this hard for you to not slay. So for every young girl who dreams big dreams, who wants to do things this world has never seen, you go, girl. Show off your magic. Be awesome. Make it a habit. Don't sit and be silent. Raise your voice and make noise. Embrace your imagination and leave the fairy tales 
to the boys. Thank you all very much. <laughs>